Hello, hello, welcome to Bold Moves Podcast, episode number 125. Today I am chatting with Mira Zaki, who is an intuitive photographer that heals through her branding photo sessions and has an amazing story of leaving for New York with $200 in the bank, a suitcase, a laptop, and a camera, and has been celebrating self-employment for, at this point, nearly 10 years, which is super exciting. And I'm pretty sure that while this episode is going out, she is enjoying Paris. And I hate to use the word jealous, but I gotta be honest, I miss Paris, so I might be a little bit envious of Mira. Anyway, I think that's enough intrigue for this one, and without any more intro needed, here is my chat with Mira Zaki. All right, hello everyone. I am chatting with Mira Zaki, who is all the way over in New York. We got our time zones together and are so excited to be chatting. Welcome to the show, Mira. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to hear your story. So, of course, you know this is the Bold Moves podcast. Obviously, you've made some. Most people make more than one. What's kind of your story? Why do you think you're a great guest on the show? I just loved your vibe. I loved what you're all about. And, um, I, you know, I'm an introvert, but I've been told that bold is one of the most common traits that people think of when they think of me. So I've, I'm impressed by that, to be honest. Yeah. I feel like I'm a little more... Um, uh, thoughtful and intentional and I am but bold I think is like as an introvert I'm like oh really oh okay that's cool <laughs> but I am very forward thinking and I am very action oriented so when I have an idea I go for it I love that and thank you for the kind words about my vibe yeah so let's hear your story let's hear about some of the bold moves you've made <laughs> I was just actually writing about this, which is funny because it didn't seem bold to me. Again, it felt like I had planned this, but my move to New York City, because I'm from Seattle originally, and I lived in California for my school years, as I call them. Um, but I just, I made such a, um, uh, you know, it wasn't a quick decision, but the mm -hmm. first time I ever visited New York, I just felt like I finally found the place where I belong. Mm hmm and I knew that I would do whatever it took to get here. So mm -hmm. I left LA, I took like a, uh, you know, like a buffer kind of move to DC just to get myself to the East Coast. And this year, December 27th, 10 years ago, I got on a one way Chinatown to Chinatown bus to New York and I never looked back. I mean, I had like one suitcase, one laptop and one camera and wow. like $200 in the bank. Like this was not, it was not um, a long-term move, <laughs> like in terms of planning. Yeah. I was like, I'm going because there's opportunity there and that's where I want to live. So. Okay, so you mentioned a suitcase, a camera, and a laptop. So that tells us that you're probably a photographer. Let's hear a yep. little bit about your career <laughs> and how that's evolved from Seattle to LA to DC to New York. Yeah, well, when I was eight years old and in that day, I'm in my 30s, so it was the late 80s. Um, it was the Polaroid camera. That was my first right. camera, like the old school, shake it like a Polaroid picture kind. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I couldn't put it down. I was like equally mesmerized and fascinated with it. And I realized that that was my best form of expression. Yeah. Now, I'm also a writer, but the camera was just, it was such a beautiful way to express what I saw without, like, I'm, I can't draw. <laughs> so it was like, thank goodness for this medium because I can express myself and I can share what I see in such a specific and beautiful and concrete way. So I kept up with the Polaroids. I went through a lot of film when I was younger. Which is expensive. <laughs> it was really expensive. My dad was like, get that thing out of her hands. <laughs> like, Let's please find some other hobby for her. Probably but wish that you grew up in digital time when you can take a million and just delete. Well, <laughs> I mean, I started on film. So right. yeah, so I'm trained on film. But from age eight up until um, 2007, I studied photography, so I took it in school the, my entire school life, and I ended up with a bachelor's degree in photography, which I thought was so cool. I didn't know mm -hmm. you could study it, like, professionally. 
That's awesome. It was awesome. <laughs> so what kind of photography do you do? Have you done? I imagine that's possibly evolved from when you were eight, which is definitely funny that, that age because that's going to come into play later. But oh, good. Uh, it's a relevant again. age for sure. <laughs> yeah. So what were you doing then? What are you doing now? And how about everything in between? Yeah, you know, it's kind of one of those things in the beginning when you're just starting out, you do everything. Mm -hmm. Like moving to New York, I shot events for five years, like straight. And I mean, yeah. in New York, there's events by five times a day. <laughs> yeah. And especially at this season. So I was photographing events. I was like assisting. I was getting myself to be known in New York because even mm -hmm. though I knew people, no one knew who I was. And sure. I was really determined to establish myself. So um, when I graduated school, my favorite things were food and travel, which remain some of my favorite activities. And yeah. I still do shoot food and travel. And within that, there's a lot of other things like lifestyle photos are people doing activities. There's mm -hmm. products, there's restaurants, there's architecture, interiors. So I've kind of done basically everything. I always joke that the only thing I haven't photographed yet is an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> and I really would like an airline client if anyone is marketing <laughs> anyone for an airline. <laughs> ask, receive. So yeah, you know, again, like within each kind of thing, there's always people. So I've always really enjoyed photographing people. And in the last year, it's become my mission to empower and elevate women because okay. we're still hiding and we're still kind of, some of us are playing small or we're not just full out stepping into who we are and sharing that with the world. And I think it's necessary. So I'm really passionate about helping women. How do you plan on doing that through your photography? Well, it's a healing and it's a really different experience for people. Um, it's an empowerment and it's an elevation when you have these professional, really strategic, well thought out photos because of my background and my training. Mm -hmm. And I do art direction. So it's really just not a snapshot of who you are. It's who you're actually stepping into and how you want your business to expand. And I, I'm intuitive as well. So I have that ability to extract like your essence and to share that with people. And it resonates really strongly. I mean, I've, I've seen my clients increase their rate tenfold after our photo shoot together. Wow. That's yeah. incredible. It's so awesome. How, how does that process work then? If I were to come to you and say I wanted photos, what would you do? Yeah. So we would get on a consultation call that could last anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half. And it sounds like a long time, but when you're talking about your dream and your vision, you, you might need that much time. Sure. <laughs> so I asked like, where have you been? Where are you now? Where do you want to go? What's your, what, what's the vision for your business and your life and just some logistical things like are there colors that you don't like you know because that is a really important component and sure. like what are your fears what's your past experiences of photo shoots and you know what is it that you want to express and so it's a combo of my own intuition combined with your answers where I create the vision. Mm -hmm. And then depending on which package you signed up for, I also have a crew. So I provide the hair, makeup and wardrobe. Okay. And then we just go from there. I schedule, I can schedule out a year. I actually have a client book for next fall. So wow. I can schedule a year in advance. Yeah. That's amazing. I am a makeup artist is one of my awesome roles and Yay. I just can't do like that's one of the reasons I don't do many weddings is because I feel like people are like what are you doing in 2021 I'm like oh gosh <laughs> I could be living in a different country I don't know yeah. you're like I'm not really sure what I'm doing tomorrow <laughs> right I'm like I can do a couple weeks <laughs> that's so and, great I mean as a recent newlywed I totally get you know like the second I was engaged you know, after like the hugs and the kisses and telling everyone, I was like, okay, I wonder if this makeup artist is free. I wonder if this yes. is <laughs> so I who I was going to ask. And I'm like, well, these are people who would probably come to my wedding anyway. So awesome. that I made it a little them. bit easier when it's, you know, like obviously they wouldn't miss it anyway, but yeah. whew, I just, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. We, my husband and I have moved like every couple of years so <laughs> I love it. Don't know where we'll be in. Yeah, time. not sure. <laughs> that forehead. Thank you though. <laughs> exactly. Like, oh, I'm really flattered. <laughs> Call me back in two yeah. years. Call me back <laughs> six months before your thing, please. Right. 
<laughs> I love it. So I'm curious, um, of all those things that you photograph, is photographing women your favorite? Do you have a favorite or is it kind of like whatever you like the variety? So you stay inspired. Yeah. I mean, I cry at the end of my photo shoots because witnessing that is just amazing. Um, I have to say that is my a branding photo shoot is my favorite thing to do. I very much enjoy food and travel, mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't have that like impact. Right. You know what I mean, it just doesn't, it can look beautiful. It can be informative. It can be a story, mm -hmm. but you know, in that capacity, it's not life changing. Right. Now I also do photograph um, humanitarian photojournalism and that's another favorite of mine, but mm -hmm. I do that less frequently than I would like to just based on my schedule. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, being able to help someone and, you know, I talk about like the ripple effect. Like if I help someone who is like a visionary, then mm -hmm. I've maybe helped thousands of people through this one person. Yeah. Oof, just getting a chill. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> That's the goal. You know, like we want to all help each other. And, and if I can do that, that's the best thing in the world. Yes, absolutely. I love that. So going back a little bit to your story, have you been working full time as a photographer then since you were eight? So you were still a photographer in LA and then in DC as well as now, of course, New York. Or did you do other? It wasn't always full time. Yeah, I was okay. always in photography, but my photography business was not full time until New York. So I'm 10 years full time. Um, but I, you know, even now, if there's like a friend or a colleague who's like, can you produce for me? I'll still do it because there's different hats that I like to wear and it's fun sure. for me to do that kind of stuff. So I've been in photography in different ways. I've been a photo editor, a producer. Um, a researcher and, you know, assistant. I learned a lot as being an assistant and that was really fun and it was necessary. I mean, there's nothing more important than that actual hands-on experience. Like absolutely nothing yeah. compares to that. I agree completely. So you may have already alluded to this or flat out said it, or it could be something where you're going to just tell me, I don't know, <laughs> which is fine. I'm so curious. <laughs> There's what no wrong answer. Um, I am wondering if you know your purpose and if so, what it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's healing. It's healing through the camera. Cause since I'm also an intuitive, um, you know, when I say that it's a transformative experience, like it's not hyperbole, it's actually people receive a healing mm -hmm. and they receive that, uh, that boost that they need to get to that next people, people, that next place or to the next people in their life. <laughs> so yeah, it really, you know, um, if you're familiar with human design, part of my human design is to inform and I consider myself a storyteller. So I'm informing with my camera, telling a story of people and helping them heal so that they can do the same. So I'm not familiar with human design. Do you want to give me the quick yeah. version? Human design is like a modality that combines um, astrology and I'm not the best at explaining it, but it's so cool. Look it up. Jovianarchive.com. It's like, it's kind of like a, in the realm of like a Myers-Briggs kind of test. Okay. So I fall under uh, the manifester. There's four personality types. Okay. And I just like to know more about myself so I can function at my best. And it was like cool. one of the coolest things that I've learned. So um, everybody will have a unique um, type and a mm -hmm. unique way that they're showing up in the world. And so okay. my main thing is to inform, which is really cool because I have a lot to say. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I'll definitely be checking that out. And then if you want to, if you don't mind, explain a little bit more about being an intuitive and how that works and healing through the camera. Cause I, this yeah. is all I've, you know, of course, as a makeup artist and I used to model as well, I've met hundreds of photographers. Mm -hmm. I've interviewed, I think two now for the podcast too. And this is new, new to me. So I'm really curious how, yeah. how that works and what's different. Yeah. So, you know, my gifts came to me very young. I was eight years old and everything happened at eight. It was like, it was so interesting. And I still am kind of um, digging deeper into that. So I picked up the camera and also my dreams started coming true when I was eight years old. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, is something wrong with me? Have I gone crazy? What is it? That was just like a concrete way of me understanding that I had these abilities that I could walk into a room and I could feel people and I could 
you know, understand their emotion or if they were hiding something and they weren't really talking about it. So I'm clairsentient, clairaudient, clairvoyant, um, and all those are just what that basically means is that I get information from the divine through my senses. And okay. because of that, that is the driving force behind why my photography looks the way that it does and how I can provide an environment for someone to actually heal and not just like a transaction where they're receiving like a headshot or something like that. Okay. So when somebody is being healed by your photo session, what about them is healing? You know, uh, I think it's really, uh, it's not like up to them, but it, what often has happened for my clients is like their fears and their old stories and the past like bad photo shoots in which they were transactions. They didn't really feel like they were witnessed and cared for. Mm -hmm. So that has tended to happen a lot with, I, I hear the same things over and over. So it's a healing of like the fear of, of vulnerability and visibility. Mm -hmm. and just being able to feel okay and comfortable in your skin and, and like empowered to embody who you are. I love that. Okay. Interesting. I'd be curious what happened if I got in front of your camera sometime. I'd love to have you. <laughs> like I said, I'm booking, I'm booking out. Yeah. I take, uh, I'm taking consult calls now till, you know, till, till the calendar runs out, which is really soon. It <laughs> 40, is soon. 48 days, people. <laughs> Are you going to celebrate your 10 year anniversary somehow? Yeah, it's funny. I won't actually be here. I'll be traveling. <laughs> Okay, where so are you I'll, headed? I'll tip my hat. Yeah, um, well, I may be in Europe or I may be elsewhere. It's, uh, it's, my plans have changed a little bit, but I will be in Paris at the end of the month after Thanksgiving. So. Oh, fantastic. December, the end of December is unknown. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I'm curious, I'm, I'm sure anyone listening too would love to know, um, first of all, where can we see your work? And then second of all, if you're active on any social media, because I don't know about anyone else, but whenever I am like, oh, they're end of the year is unknown. Like I want to follow them and see where they end up. So yeah. where oh, cool. can we find you online? <laughs> yeah. So my website is just my name. It's M-I-R-A-Z, like zebra, A-K-I.com. Okay. Um, I'm on Facebook the most often. That's the best place to actually contact me. Okay. Um, there's both a personal and a business page. So the business page is facebook.com slash Mirazaki photography. Okay. And everywhere else I'm at Mirazaki photo. Okay. Yeah. We'll make sure that that is in the show notes too, in case anyone wants to go click through to check it out later. <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Come and find me. I like questions. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that makes you the perfect podcast guest because I have lots yeah. of questions. <laughs> My next one is, what is the scariest thing you've ever done? Hmm. Let's see. Um, I, it sounds really silly maybe, but I was so resistant to Facebook Live. Like I okay. only started doing it two weeks ago. Okay. It really was terrifying to me. I was just not feeling like it could have any benefit. And I thought it was like a little gratuitous, to be honest. I was like, why is everybody doing it every day? Nothing is that important. <laughs> <laughs> and then guess what? I did it and I loved it. And I've done like 15 in the course of two weeks. <laughs> I even started an interview series, which is so funny. Oh, awesome. Um, I mean, it's probably not the scariest thing, but I, it's the one that I've had the most resistance and blocks and like it just completely was not open to doing it. It didn't want to do it. Sure. Well, they say that people are more afraid of public speaking than they are dying or exactly. most people. So yep. I guess it's not too crazy to yeah. understand. Yeah. And it is public speaking. What I found is that I get really off tangent. So I have uh -huh. to have notes. <laughs> that is like talking in the stream of consciousness. So. <laughs> So, I mean, even though it may not be something that would be terrifying to everyone, or maybe it is, and I'm just used to doing that kind of thing, um, the question's still really valuable because you said you had a lot of blocks and resistance. So how did you push past that and end up not only doing your first Facebook Live, but then doing 14 more yeah. <laughs> since? I have to be honest, I was part of a 10-day challenge, and it was like, if you've never gone live, go live, but go, and it was within a group. So it felt sure. a little bit more safe and more contained. Yeah. 
and that was kind of like just the stepping stone for me, like the training wheels. <laughs> That's and fantastic. I realized that I didn't die and I had something <laughs> to say. And it was actually fun because I had engagement. People right. were like asking me questions and I was like, oh yes, I have so much to share with you. <laughs> That's so awesome. I've done it again in a group and then I, I started to go live on my page and I just um I've just been sharing like the, the necessity of photography for a brand. So I just started bringing in some of my colleagues and friends that are experts. I brought in an art director and a wardrobe stylist and it's been super fun. <laughs> that sounds fun. I love it. So if you're going to generalize your um, method of pushing past the fear and the blocks and the resistance you had to help anyone else, like say a friend who was about to do something they were afraid to do, what advice would you give them? Yeah, you know, in the end, it wasn't about me. And I think that's one of the most common things that I realize about my fears, like the, the bigger vision and the bigger purpose is that mm -hmm. it's expression and it's a communication and it's about connection. It's not really about like me being in the spotlight and what I'm wearing and all that kind of stuff. Like the bigger purpose takes over all of that other stuff. And I didn't, there was no way of me knowing that until I did it, you know? Yeah. That's great. And I think that's applicable to so many different things people are afraid of that yeah. a lot of times if you take the self-focus out, yeah. it becomes... And, you know, in that fear and in that resistance, I had no concept of that it could ever be fun, that it would ever be enjoyable, that it would be an expression. And I heard from one of my teachers that the reason that talking feels so good is that it heals your throat chakra if you're someone who is familiar with or, or you know, mm -hmm. practices anything about the chakras. And the throat chakra is the most blocked one for most women. So I was like, oh, it's also healing. It's not just like talking. It's actually that when you express yourself, you get to release something, right? Oh, I can see that. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So what has been your favorite Facebook Live so far? <laughs> I kind of went on a rant. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I was getting frustrated with some of my connection calls and, and the fear is so real. You know, sometimes people are like, I can't even talk to you. I don't need photos for another year. I'm like, relax. Like, I'm not here to sell you on something you're not ready for. We just, right. you reached out to me. <laughs> like, let's right. talk about it. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I just, I feel like I just hit this point of like, man, people are doing it backwards. You don't understand that if you actually really want to be a brand, you've got to look to the examples that already exist. Mm -hmm. And for so many people I encounter, they want to end up on Oprah's couch. Well, I think, oh, great, but you can't get there with a selfie. You've got to have a strong right. visual presence. <laughs> you can't get there with the picture your husband took of you in the restaurant. It's not going to work. So <laughs> I felt like I was a little bit on my soapbox about the value and the need to have a strong brand and to have those visuals to go along with it because it's content. And sure. you know, if you write an article for HuffPost, you can't dare give them a selfie. You need a professional headshot. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. I'm curious because you mentioned how in these discovery calls, people are really, you know, full of fear and nervous about it. How do you get them to go from that feeling, which could potentially be even intensified when they actually show up in your studio? I mean, as a makeup artist, I've seen plenty of people freeze or be awkward or be scared or be so nervous. Even people who are just brilliant and I would never expect would be nervous. How do you comfort that person and get them to, you know, because obviously if they stayed that way, the pictures would be awful because you'd see yeah. in their face that they're terrified and that's not totally. anyone's brand. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm extremely particular about who I actually sign on because mm -hmm. if you're in an utter place of terror and you can't calm down, that's just not a fit, you know, right. but by way of like my intuition and understanding people and asking them questions, they naturally will calm down. And cause it's really never about what it is. It's never about, Oh, I'm not ready. It's uh, maybe I had a terrible experience before and I'm afraid it's going to happen again. Sure. So it's like, I have to get a little deeper and I'm not a coach, but it feels like coaching. It's kind of mm -hmm. like getting a little deeper into what the fear actually is. Is it fear of visibility, fear of another bad photo shoot, of wasting money, of investing and then not having something that you can use, sure. of not feeling like yourself. So I go pretty deep on that call. And then there's always going to be a nervousness. Like, 
I have worked with A-list celebrities. I used to work at CNN. I've worked with a small business, the small business owners. So I have a variety of experience and everyone is nervous. Even if a model can like turn it on and off, there's still just that like the jitters, you know, like mm -hmm. excitement and what's going to happen and how's this going to go. Right. So no one is immune to that. And the way that I kind of like help with that is music. I make people yeah. pick a playlist so that they can relax a little bit and they're very well taken care of. And that's really helpful to you. Like yeah. I tell people it's kind of like checking into a five star hotel when you have a photo shoot with me. That's awesome. And I can definitely agree that I've been on a few sets without music and it's almost like torture. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really awkward. It's like hearing the snap and the lights and you're like, uh, so like a joke, something. Right. <laughs> yeah. I love that. I want to go back because I have a tendency to get so caught up in more of like the feelings and the excitement and I don't think as much about like what logistically, logically happened. So I'm curious when you got off the bus in Chinatown in New York, how, what did you do? How did you make your $200 suitcase laptop yeah. camera work for you? So I found like Craigslist sublets for like short amounts of time until I realized that I didn't have to do that. <laughs> okay. I just kept finding like maybe a couple weeks or 10 days or something like that. And mm -hmm. I actually took a job at Apple because I needed health insurance. So that was okay. kind of like, I did that and I had like, they're a very generous company. So I did that while I was making myself known. And, and what were you doing for Apple? I worked in the back of house for Apple. So it was just like retail stuff and then eventually I worked with the genius bar okay but I wasn't there for very long and it's a 24-hour store here in New York so it yeah. was pretty wild I worked from 5 p.m. to 2 a.m. wow <laughs> yeah it's funny like we it was the twilight shift so I still am in touch with my friends that I used to work you know work with yeah and it's kind of funny to like reminisce some of them are still there I'm like oh my god do you know how many things I've done since then <laughs> I'm still being there but I'm, I'm really not designed for, to work for someone else so it was a very brief employment <laughs> sure <laughs> but I got my health insurance they're a great great company to work for if you're somebody who um you know can work for someone else it's a great company for sure sure yeah. so you got a job for apple you were doing sublets then what happened yeah, so I also um, got into some creative staffing agencies and I got some work. I got some photo related work while I was shooting events at night. So I kind of had it worked out that it was like the whole day was working. <laughs> was okay. like, I would work at night and then the days I would off, I would shoot events. Or if I worked at night, I would shoot events during the day. And I was like getting some more, getting my name out there through like freelance gigs. Um, okay. And just meeting people. Uh, you know, the events, I mean, I remember at one point, I think I had like 10,000 business cards that I'd accumulated and I couldn't even remember who everybody was. Yeah. I was just like, where did I meet this person? I didn't write any notes. Are they even still there? Yeah. <laughs> I am even still trying to get better at that now. <laughs> I don't take them anymore. Yeah. I just ask for their Facebook or email. I just don't, cause I, I lose them or they'll get into the trash and I just don't even bother. <laughs> yeah. It's tough. Or I'll take a picture of it and give it back to them. Yeah, I've done that or had them even hold it next to their face yeah. so I can put the yeah. face <laughs> That's smart. thing together if it doesn't have yeah. their face on the card. Yep. Super <laughs> yep. so, smart. I love that. What part of New York are you in? I'm in Manhattan. I live in yeah. Hell's Kitchen. Yeah. Okay. Fabulous. It's been a few years since I've been in New York. I miss it. So if I do come, come back soon. But not, not until January. <laughs> no, it won't be that soon. <laughs> and I probably wouldn't come in cold weather because. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty brutal here in the winter. Yeah. yeah, done my best to escape it. I'm from Milwaukee originally. So. Fair enough. I, You're done. My <laughs> You're family done is lucky. I love them and I come home for Christmas. But other than that, I try to stay warm. <laughs> Fair enough. That's a different level of cold. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Not kidding. <laughs> so I'm curious, you didn't mention any books when you moved to New York, but I'm sure that you read. I'm wondering if you have any book recommendations for our listeners or viewers. Yeah. Perfect. So this is a really lovely one. It's a daily meditation and it, it has a journey to the hearts. Okay. Um, and it has one for every day. So okay. you look up the current date and it's just beautiful. It's really inspiring. Um, I read a lot. So I also, 
really super highly recommend because we're all trying to heal from money. Um, you were a badass at making money by Jen Sincero. That's one okay. of the funniest, most powerful books I've ever read. Okay. Um, she's hilarious. I didn't even know that existed. I knew she wrote, you are a badass. I mm -hmm. didn't know. Is this a follow up book then? Yeah, I believe so. It's, it's green. <laughs> the badass okay. is yellow. So this is green. <laughs> okay. Got it. Yeah. I have to check that out. I love it. Well, thank yeah. you for sharing those. How does the meditation one work? Do you just read it and then stop and sit and think about it or? Sure. Yeah. Let's see. It, um, today is the 14th, right? Yes. So, uh, so this, you know, this one says find your center and there's like a little story in there. Okay. So it's, it's basically like an, uh, it's like an inspirational kind okay. of meditation. It's not necessarily like a read this and then sit down and close your eyes, but it's, okay. it's kind of more of like inspirational, like, you know, seek the place that you want to be and, and that kind of thing. Oh, so, okay open up to your connections and fall into the arms of universal love, that kind of thing. Yeah. Cool. I have to check that out. Thank you for the yeah. recommendation. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah. Awesome. And I think we could all use a little extra beauty in our lives. Absolutely. It's like, <laughs> I put it by my bedside table cause I read it at night and it's just like, it's so nice. <laughs> That's a great evening ritual. I like that. It also works great for morning, you know, for those of us that have like a morning practice, it's like a sure. lovely way to start. Yeah. What made you decide to read it in the evening as opposed to morning? Um, I think like I read a lot of personal development books and mm -hmm. it's not really nighttime reading because it amps me up and it's, right. like not, it's not a novel. And um, I don't know. I just couldn't really find another nighttime book that felt good that I have. I, I, right. The other day I read The Giving Tree and I was like, oh, <laughs> these don't feel good. <laughs> right. I know it ends well, but it was not the sentiment I wanted before I went to bed. So sure. because this was so inspirational to me, I felt like it helped me wind down from the day and I calmed down with like a really comforting thought before okay. I tried to sleep. <laughs> that makes sense because I definitely agree with you that personal development books will amp me up more so oh than anything gosh. else. So yeah. that's why I was thinking depending on what those meditations were like, I would be like, yeah, like I'm going to go find my story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not be able and, to fall asleep. <laughs> yeah, and like, I mean, it's available for you to read a different day. Like you don't have to sure. only read today's day. Right. <laughs> also, it's, I think it's like, it's more inspirational then, you know, yeah, it's definitely worth it. And I have done it in the morning time as well when I Got it. feel aligned with that. Very cool. Mm -hmm. I have another question for you, and that is about any advice that you have for our listeners or viewers, any lessons that you learned that you wish you had learned sooner or that you thought were super impactful and worth sharing? What would you like to share with anyone listening or watching? Yeah, I think one of the biggest blessings of my life was getting over myself and like, you know, the feel the fear and do it anyway, because just like with the Facebook Live, it sounds silly, but visibility is such a big thing. And it's what I preach. Sure. You know, it's like, I've had people come to me and say, well, you're not as visible as you could be. So if you're trying to empower women, you've got to do it too. Yeah. And I was like, no, I'm good. I'm just behind the scenes over here. Like not in such a resistance, but I just didn't know what was possible till I did it. Sure. And, and I think that that was really transformative for me. Yeah. And getting over ourselves really gets us to that bigger picture. So sure. I, that's what would be my advice. Like, you know, be intentional about it and do that thing that is probably uncomfortable. Yeah. Not necessarily terrifying. Cause I do think that some boundaries are needed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jump off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> However, what you're afraid of is not going to be as bad as it is in your mind. It yeah. never is. Absolutely. And it, you know, I, I could not conceive of what would be positive about doing a Facebook live video. And then you found it. And I found it. And now I love it. I mean, you know, it's communication. It's really just, it's sharing myself in this different way. Sure. Do do it, you know? 
Yeah. I'm curious with the Facebook group you were in and you using the word visibility, which is obviously not so unique and niche that you would be the only person using it, but are you uh, familiar with Michelle Lewis, Visibility Vixen? No. Okay. Because she's a podcast as well. I've had her on the show and uh, she does Facebook challenges too. And I think she was doing a Facebook live one. So I didn't know if maybe there was a connection, a mutual connection there. That no, I actually have signed up for like video challenges and never yeah. did them. <laughs> I was like, oh, I should learn this. Nope. <laughs> the amount of things that I've signed up for, <laughs> like free. But it's not just me. <laughs> yeah, no, You're, we're in the same boat for, for that one. <laughs> All right. I love that advice. And that's kind of, you know, the whole mission behind the podcast is to get people further and further outside of their comfort zones for that exact reason. So I appreciate you bringing that right back to everyone's mind in case it left for a second. (laughs) It's just very real. You know, I think that we can, we can all like have these mantras and these catchphrases, but it's a real experience like across the board. Anything you're afraid of is never as bad as when you do it. It's just, we have a strong fear mechanism in our, (laughs) in our, you know, fight or flight. It it is very, it's like scientific. It's really in your brain that our brains are designed to protect us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. we don't have as many real things to be afraid of that are like life or death as we did and our bodies totally. haven't caught up <laughs> it's it's actually very le- yeah it's very legitimately real i mean no one's running from a saber-toothed tiger anymore <laughs> yeah i'm glad <laughs> okay. yeah. thank goodness <laughs> I'll do 10 facebook lives instead of that yeah <laughs> All right. So when you were telling your story, I mentioned that we were going to get back to eight-year-old Mira. Mm. So this is my favorite question to ask everyone. I ask it at the end of all of my podcasts and I ask it just at parties and when I meet people because I think it's so fun. So if eight-year-old Mira could look into a crystal ball and see where you are now and all the things you did between then and now, and then the foreseeable future, obviously we don't know what's going on at the end of December, but (laughs) what you can tell is ahead for you. On a scale of one to 11, how excited would eight-year-old you be to be where you are now? 12. (laughs) (laughs) I had a feeling the number was not gonna be low. (laughs) I don't tend to be a rule follower. I also thought I knew what you were asking, but it was not the same question. So. Ooh, what did you think I was going to ask? I thought you were going to say, what would I say to my eight-year-old self now? Ah, okay. Yeah. When I was interviewed on my own podcast, I did a fun switch because one of my guests was like, I want to interview you. <laughs> and I think he asked me a question similar to that, oh, which was really it. interesting to consider. But yeah, no, I like to tap into the excitement level and just kind of get people thinking about yeah. their life and since since childhood so (laughs) I mean I I my first international trip was at age 11 so it was it's been instilled in me and for people who are not as um often don't travel as often Mm -hmm. they're like you have such a great life like you travel all the time I'm like oh right well because it's part I made it part of my life because it's important to me and I made it part of my business so I don't ever think about it like even just going to my family's for thanksgiving i've been on the phone with my mom and she's like did you pack i was like mom i'm not going to west africa i can pack in 10 minutes no right i've not packed yet (laughs) (laughs) i'm good anything i'm missing i can buy this is still continental america (laughs) right and that's one thing that i definitely am very last minute about is packing but I, i haven't been on many international trips but i think just going somewhere, even if it's overnight, every go, like I just have a lot of things I don't unpack too. (laughs) So that happens as well. (laughs) So I think that makes it a lot easier, but I do have friends who like start packing two weeks before a trip and I'm like, don't you use that? (laughs) (laughs) I just don't need to, you know? (laughs) Right. (laughs) Yeah. I I feel you there. (laughs) Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and what you do in the world with us. I really appreciated you being a guest on the show. Thank you so much. That was super fun. I feel like (laughs) I want more more questions that I are are like not tricky, but that are like the last one. Ah, All right. Maybe I'll think of some more. (laughs) 
I've been in front of a lot of cameras, but I don't think I've ever felt healed by it. Although I guess I've not really gone into it feeling I needed healing either, but I'm still curious about this process and found her story super interesting. Now, of course, as always, there will be a challenge on Friday, so stay tuned for that so that you can see what Mira has in store for us. Also, the best way to do that is to subscribe. That way, you will automatically get a notification or even an automatic download when the episode comes out, so I would love if you did that. I would also, of course, love if you shared this with many any aspiring photographers you know or an airline company like Mira asked for if you know someone who's looking for airline photos or personal branding photos. She has some pretty cool packages for bloggers and such where you need consistent content. I have not seen any other photographers offer that, so I think that's pretty darn brilliant if you ask me. Anyway, also, in addition to subscribing, in addition to sharing, of course I would love those things, a review would be a lovely way to wish me a happy end of November, I guess, <laughs> and help me meet my goals of inspiring many, as many people as humanly possible. And then of course, if you know anyone or if you yourself would be a great guest on the show, you've done some bold moves in your past, please head over to www.mandiem.com slash guest. That is where there is a form that works best on computers and not phones or tablets. And you can input your information, all of your links, all of the photos that go along with these episodes for those who are either watching on YouTube or listening in the blog post. That would be fantastic to send me that information and I will be in touch to potentially schedule an interview. I love sharing these amazing stories and if you have an amazing story or one of your friends does, I would love to share that as well. All right, as always, be bold and have a sparkly day. Bye-bye.